New research finds tens of thousands of hate-filled fake posts about Syria. The disinformation is more strategic and systematic than it might first appear. But why does it matter? Disinformation creates more real-world harm than you think. Here's how it all started. From the beginning of the Syrian revolution, when Syrians took to the streets to demand democracy and freedom, the regime denied protests were taking place. I've seen awful pictures of what happened. Why was there such a brutal crackdown? What happened? Well, I'll give you some examples. But it wasn't until the Russians brought their advanced weapons and troops into Syria in 2015 that the attacks on humanitarians became more precise, targeted, and systematic, from the sky and online. The lies became coordinated, amplified by Russia's network of state-run TV channels, affiliated blogs, and pseudo-news sites run by conspiracy theorists. Analysis of 47,000 disinformation tweets over seven years, shared with over 3 million followers, reveals peaks in disinformation around key events such as the release of the White Helmets Netflix documentary, chemical weapons attack in Khan Sheikhoun and Duma, and the release of international investigations into those chemical attacks by OPCW, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. إذا ما ضلينا عم نحمي الحقيقة حول الجرائم ضد الإنسانية يلي لسه عم ترتكب بسوريا منكون عم نساعد النظام وكل الأطراف اللي عملت انتهاكات بإن تفلتنا العقاب وما تتحاسب. Offline, this has had devastating consequences for civilians and humanitarians on the front lines. خسرنا كثير من زملائنا المتطوعين خلال الهجمات المزدوجة لقوات النظام روسيا لما كنا نروح لإنقاذ الناس بعد القصف كانوا يرجعوا يستهدفوا نفس المكان بشكل متعمد لقتل عمال الإنقاذ والمستجيبين الأوليين بالإضافة إنهم عم يستهدفوا مراكزنا وبيوتنا صارت الناس تفكر مرتين قبل ما تطوع بالدفاع المدني السوري لأنه الأمر مو متعلق فيني كفرد متعلق بأولادي بزوجتي بأهلي This information has also made it much easier for governments to shirk their responsibility to act to protect civilians from mass atrocities and stalled political action, allowing global powers to get away with having no policy on Syria in the face of some of the most egregious crimes of our time. For survivors of atrocities such as the chemical attacks, the relentless attempts to erase the truth has had a devastating emotional impact. هذا الانكار للجرائم متعب ومرهق جدا. انا بحس طول الوقت انه انا بدي ضل عم قاتل لاثبت فعلا انه انا عانيت من القصف او من الحصار او من الضربات الكيماويه، هي الجرائم النظام كلها بينكرها هو وحلفائه. Today Governments are borrowing Assad and Russia's claim that Syria is now safe and refugees can go home, despite stark evidence to the contrary. Denmark has led the way pursuing an inhumane policy that's stripping hundreds of Syrian refugees of their residency and threatening to deport them back to Syria. Turkey has also announced plans to return one million Syrian refugees. As the lies mount, the seeds of doubt create a cloud of distorted facts and confusion over the truth. والفشل بوقف التضليل اللي قام فيه النظام السوري واللي دعمته روسيا بيحطنا امام تطبيق نفس هي التكتيكات مرة ثانية بأوكرانيا. كثير مهم نحافظ على حقيقة السردية حول كل شيء صار بسوريا وما نسمح للنظام السوري بأنه يسيطر على هي السردية وبأنه يحاول يمسح كل الدلائل حول أبشع الجرائم اللي, اللي قام بارتكابها بالنسبة إلي أنا ملتزم بعملي بإنقاذ حياة الناس والنظام وروسيا عم يستهدفونا بسبب هذا العمل هذا الخوف المستمر بيخليك حاسس يعني بضغط كبير كل الوقت ممكن الواحد ينهار يعني بأي لحظة